Hey y'all, what's up? It's me, Shreebe. <laughs> um, this video is an addendum to the teacher-student relationship, okay? And I'm going to highlight the teacher-student relationship with a couple of stories, not about me. All right. Before I get into the story itself, I want to give you a little backstory. Now, this story I've been wanting to tell for a very, very long time. Y'all want to see my mood today? That's my mood for today. Yes, they fly. That's it. Anyway, back to the business. Ooh, one more, cause you know. For those of you who are wondering where I am, I'm in the Bushwick area. And Bushwick, Brooklyn, be having the flyest fucking art. Ain't that some shit, I love that shit. I wish I could take a picture of it, I might come back and take the picture next time. Anywho. So if you follow my Instagram page and you see certain photos of me calling in a mood, it's from Bushwick. Anywho, back to the business. Um, this is also a navigating the YouTube street story. Especially this back story as to why I'm speaking on this now. So I spoke to y'all about World War III on these YouTube streets. And I told y'all that the war has simmered and there are battles raging on and I told y'all that I had to gear myself up for battle and I told y'all how I had to ether somebody on a petty level and that's over with because the truth has been shown all right sometimes you ain't gotta fight for the truth truth don't need no fighting truth gonna sit there regardless it's the liars that want to fight all fucking day anyway so, um, before I got into my aspect of the war, there were certain people, I heard their names, but I wasn't following them. I was like, mm -mm, they sound like too much trouble. That's too much drama. Let me stay over here. Okay. Or better yet, some of them just never, I never took to them like that. I was like, yeah, I guess they got good content, but I don't know. I'm gonna stick with what I got. Right. And it's so funny that after my part in this war, I was able to interact with certain content creators that normally I wouldn't really deal with. Now, one content creator in particular, I stumbled upon his live and I didn't know it was this particular person at first because the, the name of the content creator on that live was different from the name of the content creator that I know, if you can understand that. So the content creator started talking about the subject that I'm gonna be talking to you about, but he had some inaccuracies. So, you know, I corrected him in a very respectful way. I'm not disrespectful to people who are not disrespectful to me. I try to respect everybody. You know what I mean? Ooh, that's such a beautiful hamsa. I should show y'all. You see how the universe works for me? Now you might not know this is a hamsa. You might be like, what kind of middle finger shit is this? But this is actually the beginnings of a hamsa. You see that? Dope. Anyway, let's go back. Some of y'all act like Ren and Snippy, but we're gonna keep it along. We're gonna keep it along. So, as I corrected this content creator, he asked me to send him some links, which I did. But I also mentioned that, you know, I don't know you, but now that I know who you are, I need to know you're really not about no fuck shit. And if you are not about the fuck shit, 
you need to check my channel out first to make sure that you want to deal with me. Okay? And I never heard back from this content creator. All good. That ain't no big deal. I don't know this content creator like that. This is not anything for me to have an issue with. I'm just giving you the backstory on why I decided to push this story up. You know, because I don't want nobody to try to say, oh, you know, she bit off being this and that and the third. Nah, I ain't bite off you, bro. Mm -mm. I've been meaning to tell this story for a minute. I was just trying to figure out how to do it. And now I do. Okay, so thank you, content creator. I won't name you a name. I don't need to. So, this story is going to touch upon karma yoga and bhakti yoga at the same damn time. It's also going to touch upon a little bit of black history, which is highly important. And I'm also going to give you some extra tidbits on how and why I know all of this information. Now, as some of you who follow me know, I used to work and teach at a place called Integral Yoga Institute. Okay? And my Guru Dev, Sri Swami Satchitananda, has many disciples, many celebrity disciples. Some of his disciples you watch on TV all the time. Some of his disciples that you see on TV all the time or in movies have grown up at his ashram. And no, I won't say the name because the name's not important. Just know it's facts. Now, one of these celebrities, way back in the days, way before me, I mean, I think when this was going on, I was like a baby, I was just pushed out or something. So don't think this is something recent, because it's not. Remember, my Guru Dev died in the 90s. And this lady died in 1997. She passed, okay? So, one of, and let's wait for the train to finish going. This is how you know I'm in New York, y'all. And why y'all think New Yorkers talk so loud? Because we gotta compete with the bomber cloud subway, yo. Ain't nobody got time to wait for no subway to finish because this shit is popping every five minutes. Ain't somebody smoking that loud. Anywho, so one of Guru Dev's closest, nearest, and dearest devotees to him was a woman named Alice Coltrane. If you don't know who Alice Coltrane is, she is a jazz singer and musician. Her husband was John Coltrane, very famous jazz musician and artist. On her own right, besides being John Coltrane's wife, she had her own extensive set of skills and was the winner. My favorite album from Alice Coltrane it's called The Journey in Satchitananda, which highlighted her devotion to him. You see, her bhakti yoga was very strong. And like I said before, in bhakti yoga, it's about devotion. You can be devoted to a thing, a spiritual aspect, a person, your teacher. Because when there was no currency, welcome to New York, babies. When there was no currency back in the day, and you needed to pay the teacher with something, you paid with your devotion. You paid with your loyalty. You paid with your time. As currency became more and more prevalent, ooh, I got one more beautiful picture to show y'all. Ain't she gorgeous? Ain't she the winner? Go ahead now. So as currency became the thing to do, you know, people paid money. 
because they wanted to show appreciation for the gifts that were bestowed upon them. Alice Coltrane used to travel with Guru Dev many, many times. My thumbnail that I'm gonna put up, how's everything, is um, gonna be a picture of the two of them together. Okay. Now, at one point in time, before Guru Dev um, bought the building at Integral Yoga, you know, he was going through financial problems. Back in those days, you was not renting a commercial building. You owned it, or you rented to own. You rented an apartment. You might have rented a room in a house, but the whole house, you're paying mortgage. The whole building, you're paying mortgage. So let's say Guru Dev had to pay mortgage to his building. And for those of you who do not know, property taxes in New York City are extremely high. I'm talking about Manhattan, I ain't talking about no Brooklyn. And the bigger your building, the more your property taxes are. A lot of businesses in Manhattan go down, not because they don't do well in their business, but because the rent is so high. Why is the rent so high? Yes, greedy landlords make it high but also the property taxes are super high in Manhattan. And if my yoga studio has to charge you 20 bucks a class or $17 a class, even though the building is paid for, they got to pay them property taxes. And sometimes those property taxes are $500,000. You gotta pay the whole year up one time, there ain't no payment plan. This is what y'all don't know. I used to work there, that's how I know. Anywho, back then, Gurudev did not have to worry about property taxes because, you know, he was paying mortgage on the building. He, he owned it like outright. And I also told you about Swamis. Swamis are renunciates. They take vows of poverty, chastity, and service. And when I say chastity, that's the main part of the purity that they have to keep in order to be a renunciate. So of course, Alice Coltrane, who was already a big musician, was like, Guru Dev, you need to pay for this building. You need to give him the money to own this building. And Guru Dev as a renunciate was like, yeah, I know. The universe will provide, my darling. It's okay. And I'm sure Alice Coltrane had a Sanskrit name given to her by Guru Dev, but that's not important at this time because we got more story about her. Every day, every other day, every week, she would beg her Guru Dev, please take this money from me, please. How much you need to pay for this building? Oh, don't worry about it, my love. Don't worry about it, my heart. And he didn't call her that. You know, I wasn't there. This is how the story was told to me. And I'm gonna explain to you why the story was told to me. Okay? So he's like, oh, my heart, don't worry about it. The universe will provide. If it's meant to be, it will be. Yes, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. And she said, come on, man, you're killing me. But remember, he's a renunciate. He couldn't accept nothing. Finally, about the day before the money was due to own the place, Alice Coltrane put something in Guru Dev's pocket and said, you Take it. There's nothing on it. Yes, give thanks. And technically, you can take nothing. So, what Alice Coltrane did was give Guru Dev a blank check. The blank check was made out to Integral Yoga Institute. 
Not tree Swami Sachidananda. Not tree bad. Not none of these people. The check was made out to Integral Yoga. And there was no amount on it. So, Guru Dev could accept that because it's not a gift for him. It's a gift for his child, his baby, which was Integral Yoga Institute in Yogaville. And he gave that check to the accountants who worked for him. And because of that, Integral Yoga has owned the building at 227 West 14th Street for over 50 years. And my bad, let me rephrase that. They've been in that building for almost 55 years and they've owned the building for a good 30. At least. Now, that was a lesson in karma yoga to no end. And I still haven't explained karma yoga yet, but karma yoga means selfless service. Okay? This lady was writing checks with numbers on it, left and right. She had it. But the most selfless thing that she could have done for somebody else was give them a blank check and trust them enough to know they're going to put the right number in there. And he did. He did. Now there's more to the story because devotion goes two ways, everybody. Devotion ain't just one way. Now, I don't think Guru Dev and Alice Coltrane ever fell out. Okay, it wasn't like they got into an argument. And even if they did, who gives a shit, right? But Alice Coltrane, I think she decided to move to California. And before she moved to California, she started studying with Sai Baba. Now, for those of you who do not know who Sai Baba is, if you like those Nag Champa incense in the blue uh, case, you love you some Sai Baba. Okay? And he was a character back in the day, too. But she ended up studying with him. And because of studying with him, that's when she became a Swami. And she changed her name to Swamini Turis Woo! Turiya Sangita Nanda. I had to stop walking to get it right. Swamini Turiya Sangita Nanda. Okay? When I'm done with this video, I will explain what Turiya means, Sangit means, and you also always know that Ananda means bliss. Okay? I ain't guessing with these Sanskrit names no more. I'm gonna tell you what they are, and I'm gonna put it in my description. Do you think Guru Dev was mad at this lady? Hell no. It, I was told that he was overjoyed when she finally became a Swami. He wasn't gonna be mad that she went to Sai Baba. You know how many gurus he went through before he found Master Shivananda? And then we got another story on that. Okay? It's always gonna be gurus. There's always gonna be teachers. And sometimes those teachers don't serve you no more, but if they're real teachers, they're not gonna care where you go. Yo, you happy over there? Be good. You became a Swami over there? Fantastic. Now, the people at Integral Yoga wanted to do something like this three months or something like that. And then, you know, when I found out this story about Alice Coltrane buying the building, I was like, yo, and it wasn't just me. It was a gang of people. Okay? A gang of black people. And white people. 
that were like, if this lady such, did such a good job by securing this building, why are we not honoring her? We got plaques of everybody out this monkey. We got a whole wall of saints and this and that. And you can't big up this one black lady? Are you serious? You playing. And I said it like that, because that's old school by Robbie. You know what Integral Yoga did? They had a celebration. And this was around 2015 or 2016. Yeah, I want to say it was after 2014. I could be wrong. Remember, a lot of brain cells are missing right now. So my dates are a little fuzzy, but I guarantee you, I'm going to call my people at Integral Yoga, and they're going to tell me the exact date that it happened. And I was there at the celebration. My boss invited her whole family from California. They came down to New York to celebrate this woman and what she did for our building. Because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for her, there would be no building. There'd be no more Integral Yoga Institute in New York. Nah. She's the winner, yo. And y'all gonna let her sit there and slide like that? Y'all stupid. Y'all really respect all people? And remember, Guru Dev is dead at this time. So I'm yelling at humans and swamis. Like, y'all better get this shit right. Get, you better honor this lady. And they did. And now when you go to Integral Yoga and you open up a certain door, you're going to see that plaque and a picture of her as Swami Turiya Sangeeta Nanda. And they bigging her ass up. And they telling you that if it was not for this woman, there would be no building. Don't play me. I wasn't the only one who had a hand in making sure that Alice Coltrane was honored. It was a couple of people. And the powers that be felt, yes, this is good. I stayed at Integral Yoga because my first yoga teacher there was black. From the inception, of integral yoga, it has been not only interfaith, but interracial. That man didn't give a fuck what your color was. He gave five fucks. And we got another story on that, because there was something he did give a fuck about, and even then, he had to let that go. Teachers are humans, gurus are humans. We ain't meet the, the pure consciousness like Krishna that came down here yet. We ain't meet that motherfucker. We ain't none of us meet no Jesus neither. Fuck out of here. Ain't nobody alive on this day met Jesus face to face back 5,000 years ago. Fuck that. But I believe what was told to me about Alice Coltrane. And if they had a whole ceremony on it, must be true. There's so much devotion here. And, and it's amazing how Guru Dev was just as devoted to her as a person. He was devoted to her happiness. He was devoted to her peace. He probably knew that I wouldn't be a good teacher if she didn't blossom and evolve and become a Swamini herself. Why not? That's the ultimate when you reach a certain age. The ultimate. So the student and teacher relationship is so much different than people think. Please don't get ignorant and think sexually. I'm all nothing. Because if you're thinking sexually about anything male and female related all the time, clearly you don't have a mother or you don't have a sister, or you don't have an aunt, or you don't have a cousin. And if you think, or you don't have a grandma, and if you think sexually about any of them, you are one sick motherfucker. Please block me. <laughs> Please. I hope you enjoyed this story on black excellence. 
in the yoga world. There's not a lot of stories like this at all. Not a lot. Because a lot of yoga studios, even in New York, didn't accept black people like that. Okay? And don't get me wrong, humans can be prejudiced. Humans can be racist. They exist everywhere. But there was less of it here. Or better yet, that was the idea. That was the teaching. Even though the teacher is gone, the teaching should not change. And if they do, that's okay too. Because traditions and promises are made to be broken, evolve, and change. I don't tell people namaste when I'm done talking. Because not everybody responds to namaste. And I'll get to what namaste means when I talk about japa yoga. So until I get to japa yoga, and like I said, next is karma yoga, I hope everybody has a peaceful and wonderful day. And extra shout out to all my New Yorkers on these YouTube streets. I don't care what part of New York from, shout out to you. Okay? Have a great day. Feel free to comment with any inconsistencies I may have brought up. I told you, I like to listen to these videos and then put in the corrections for my inconsistencies in my um, description. So please don't be afraid to put any inaccuracies or anything like that in the comments, okay? I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Peace.